Hello and welcome to the One Life Church devotional series where we cover the entire Bible in 20 months. Well, today's chapters are Psalm 91 and 1 Timothy chapter 2. Now in Psalm 91, there is a blessing spoken over those who take refuge in God. It says here, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High dwells. In other words, you hang out, you make that your, your home. And the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. He is my refuge. He's my fortress. He's the God in whom I trust, the psalmist says. And then he goes on to this metaphor of you hiding under his wings like a, a chicken under the hen, hen's wings. And he says, you will not fear the terror of night or the arrow that flies by day. You know, at nighttime, lights are out. We've just had load shedding. The things are pretty dark down here. You, you wouldn't fear the shadows nor the attack that comes in the day. The, the same, the... the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, the disease that you don't know about, and the disease that comes at midday, like the one we've just seen, COVID in the middle of the day. If you say the Lord is my refuge and make the most high your dwelling, verse 9 says, no harm will overtake you, disaster will come near your tent. Well, what is that saying? That Christians will never ever have a hard time. No, it's not saying that. It's saying that if you take refuge in him, he's going to hold you. He's going to have you. Now, remember his his perspective we saw yesterday, a day for him is like a thousand years for us. He's got an eternal perspective. So we don't always understand the situation we go through. We don't always understand. It doesn't always go according to our plan. But God says, if you take refuge in me, it's going to be okay. This is what he says. For he will command his angel concerning you to guard you in all your ways. He'll, he'll send angels. This is an interesting teaching. That God would send angels. Now, I'm sitting on a bed. If I had little kids, this would be the kiddies' bed in our apartment. My dad used to tuck us into bed at night, right up until we were in our late teens. And he used to pray this curious prayer. I think it came out of a text like this, that he would con command his angels concerning you. He used to ask God to put an angel on the four corners of our house. I'll never forget that. And then one day, there was this prophetic guy that came to church you know those those chips can be quite freaky eh? and he said that man in the blue sweater stand up please we must have been about 500 in the building my dad stopped he says strange thing as i looked at you tonight sir i saw a picture of your house and an angel on the four corners of your house the most remarkable prophecy i've ever heard because only the sons of my dad would have known that that's what he prayed over them Four corners. This is what this verse says. An angel over the four corners of your house. He will send angels concerning you. That doesn't mean we go talk to angels. It doesn't mean we ask for angels. We ask God to look after us. And that's sometimes how he does it. And you will trample the great lion and the serpent. In other words, you'll have victory over the demonic. Then, 1 Timothy chapter 2. Fascinating chapter. This one, Paul says, I urge you to pray for those in authority. And the reason he asks that praise says... That you may live quiet lives so that the gospel may go out there. Because this is what he wants. Verse 3, our God and Savior wants all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. And the assumption is, if you're praying for your government and there's peace in the land, we can get on with preaching the gospel. Of which he says, I am a herald. That's what God's called me to do, to preach the gospel. He says, I need to talk about one God, one mediator who gave himself as ransom for all. Then he says, therefore... Because of the gospel, this is how you ought to live. He says, men, stop fighting. Stop using your hands to squabble and fight. You're getting distracted now. Lift them up rather in worship and pray. And women, he talks to them about their, their clothing. He says, I want you to dress modestly. Don't get distracted. Now, don't get distracted trying to seduce the blokes and get all, all natty the way you're getting dressed. He says, let's focus. Let's focus on getting the gospel out there. And then verse 12. Probably one of the most controversial verse, verses these days is this. I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man. She must be quiet. Now, what does that mean? Well, that quite clearly doesn't mean a blanket muzzle on all women. I mean, that would be just against how they've been made, isn't it? They talk 10 times more than we talk. In addition to that, it doesn't 
blanketly stop their preaching either. I mean, Philip had four daughters and they all prophesied. What, in the shower by themselves? No, they spoke. And prophecy is speaking the word of God. Uh, Timothy was taught by his grandmother and his mother. He's a male, they female. Uh, Priscilla and Aquila both taught Apollos. Uh, the woman at the well, she taught an entire village. And for two days they believed her and then finally they believed Jesus. No, this, I've had a Greek theologian explain this to me. He says it could equally be described as this. I do not permit a woman to teach with, instead of the word or, authority over a man. In other words, preach governmentally, saying, I'm going to discipline you now. I'm going to set some doctrine. The reality is, in our church anyway, blokes don't even preach like that. And I, I lead the team. I, I wouldn't stand up and bring discipline and bring direction without submitting myself to the other elders on the team. So he's saying, we don't just want some auntie to stand up there and discipline us and send us off in a direction. No, no, not with authority like that. And then you say, well, what about the other verses? Well, what it says here, for Adam was formed before Eve. Well, well, that's just a fact, wasn't it? And Adam wasn't the one deceived first, it was her. That's also a fact. Uh, but women will be saved through childbirth when they continue through faith. And he's just saying, as men are saved by faith, women too are saved by faith. Well, as we work out our faith, Paul says, let's not get distracted. Let's keep pressing on preaching the good news of Jesus and his gospel.